Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Keys to Powerful Communications with Your Leader. Welcome, welcome, come on in, happy end of August. How is everyone doing? I cannot believe that it's the end of summer, although it's really not the end of summer for us because we're gonna be warm for a few more months. But I know the kids have gone back to school and we're buckling back down. Please come in and say hello and let us know where you are. And did you have a great summer? I hope so. And uh, you're ready to jump into fall. So I am very excited about today's topic. It is one of my favorites. But first of all, let's go over some logistics. Yes, come on in. Yay. All right. The educational part of today's webinar will be about 40 minutes. I'd like to leave a little more time today for Q&A because I think this is a very popular topic for administrative professionals. So I wanna make sure that I'm able to answer your questions today. I also have a little special announcement before we go to Q&A today. You can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar and Malia will be accumulating those off to the side. So when we get to Q&A, we can answer as many of those questions as I possibly can. And you also will receive a replay link of today's webinar. So shall we begin? Well, first of all, as I said, this is one of my most favorite topics. I mean, communications in general is my favorite probably because I've realized over all the years in the workplace and uh, the more I work with people and interact with so many people and even here in our own office, I realized how important communications is and our ability to be productive, to get things done. It affects our relationships and more. I especially love to focus on communications between assistants and their leaders. So this has actually been in the forefront for me since April. So why? What's happened since April? Well, big news. I've been out back on the road finally since uh, 2019. I've been out on the road and I've been working on site with organizations and I've also presented at some conferences. So I'm in the weeds. I'm out there with people again. I absolutely love it. And of course, that means I'm exposed to the dynamics of what's happening with individuals in their workplaces. And I hear the challenges and I hear the frustrations and I get those aha moments. So that's one reason why it's been in the forefront. Another reason is I was really fortunate to have a, a wonderful uh, coaching assignment. Um, about a month ago, maybe five weeks ago, I was on site at an organization where I was coaching an executive and their assistant. So when I do on-site coaching, which I've done many times in the past, I work with the executive and assistant uh, very closely. I'm on site for two days and I watch everything they do. I especially sit with the assistant and watch everything that happens at the assistant's work area. I observe how they communicate with each other or how they don't communicate with each other. I look for gaps. I look for ways for them to improve their relationship and their productivity. So being on site again and doing that really brought to my attention how important communications is between the leader and the administrative professional and how much more complicated it is today because of all these different tools and platforms and apps that we're using. So we're gonna talk about that because if you don't choose the right tool, you're not gonna have the impact you wanna have or need to have. Um, so anyways, as I was saying, that's why this is coming to the forefront. The other reason, one more reason, and this way it gives people time to come in before we jump into information. But why it's in my forefront is because I'm getting ready to teach our flagship training program, the Star Achievement Series. 
So how many of you are familiar with that? Do you know anything about that program or have you heard me talk about that in the past? If you did say yes in the chat. So uh, I'm not gonna go into depth about that program, but it is our flagship training program. There are uh, three levels of learning. Um, after two levels of going through the course, you can receive a certification and designation. So, but why I'm really excited about teaching it this again, starting in September. Oh good, I'm glad so many of you are familiar with it. Is I created the second generation star achievement. And that is something that I worked on all last summer and changed and updated every single workbook as a result of what I saw happen since 2019. So while you're waiting for the next session, okay, you're waitlisted for now. All right, you couldn't get in. I'm going to start in September, Catherine. <laughs> We're starting in September. But anyway, in that uh, series, there are several instances where we focus on communication. And, and we hit it from many different angles. So I'm getting all psyched and I'm really getting pumped about talking about it. So that's why today I am so excited to have this time with you. And what I'm going to do is share five keys. That's all I wanna to share today are five, the five that I think are the most critical and that I'd really like you to learn or know. And maybe you know some of what I am gonna share with you. So I suggest you look for the golden nuggets. Maybe something I am going to say that you didn't know or you don't do it as often as you should do it. So that's another approach. How do I sign up for your September session? Sorry, I wanna address that right away. Uh, Maria, you could go to officedynamics.com um, and go under the administrative programs tab and there's a certification tab and then you'll see star achievements series so uh, we still have about two weeks that we can take attendees um, so anyways i'm going to share with you the five keys and then i also have little a little bit of bonus information as to how you communicate with your leaders during chaotic times. So let's get started. Are you ready? Number one is you have to initiate communication with your leaders. Now, I know you're probably gonna say, well, I do it all the time. I'm always asking my leaders things. What I wanna to talk about is initiating purposeful communication, initiating communication where you're getting more pieces of the puzzle, not just, oh, what do I need to do today? What meetings do you want me to set up today? Or where you're asking questions about a trip they're going on, or maybe a board meeting that's coming up. Do you have the minutes ready? Or let's talk about your daily or your weekly huddles with your staff. That's, that's just the basic stuff. And you do that all day long, right? I mean, if you think about that communication, we, we do talk all day long to each other. We're constantly going back and forth, you know, with your leaders and they're doing the same with you. But what I'm talking about is you have to initiate the conversations where you sit with each other or you're on a Zoom meeting, a video conference meeting, where you take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to truly talk about the day's priorities, where you talk about, well, and why the day's priorities, because when you left work yesterday or you stopped working yesterday, your leaders, most of your leaders were still working last night. And many of them were up early this morning and they were working on things. So what you thought was the A priority yesterday could have easily changed last night or you know that last time you saw that individual. So that's why you do a touch base to confirm priorities. Um, 
when you're initiating those purposeful conversations, you're trying to get more context around what they're telling you. Like I said, what, what managers tend to do, what leaders tend to do, because they are time compressed, is they throw out a piece of the puzzle. So picture a puzzle. I wish I had my puzzles here that has not been assembled yet, right? There's a lot of pieces. So what they do is they throw you a piece, they throw you another piece, maybe they throw you three pieces. Well, you need 10 pieces, okay? If you're going to be more productive, if you're going to be more effective, if you're going to be able to anticipate and be proactive, you have to get more information. And we're going to talk about that in a little while about getting more information. Um, and, and the hard part for administrative professionals today is you're out of the loop. You're out of the loop, meaning a lot of what goes on with your leaders and the information they gather uh, or they, they email on their own, right? Or they're on their phones and they're texting other people. Often you're not privy to seeing what's going on. So one thing before technology came out and we had all these wonderful tools, as an EA, everything had across my desk, everything. It didn't get to my, my manager until I saw it. So the good news is I did know what was going on. So that's your challenge today. And like I said, you don't sit back and wait for them to talk to you you're the one who needs to say, let's have a 10 minute, you know, talk, whatever you want to call it. But again, it, it's not just to talk for the sake of talking. It's where you have to have purposeful conversation. It's where you ask, like I said, for more context around something. It's where you understand uh, where you try to get what's what they see on the horizon, like maybe a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, where they know in their head what's coming up. But how many times do they tell you last minute? How many times are they telling you the day before something, right? But this way, if you understand that and you see some of that and get that information, you can be more proactive and be prepared for that. And so we're going to, um, I'm looking, this filtering for management has become more scarce. Yes, it's very, very scarce, as you said. And a lot of that is because leaders are independent today. They're tech savvy. Uh, they feel they could do things on their own, which they can, but it doesn't mean they should. So I'm going to tell you one thing very quickly. Um, when I do the coaching on site with executives and assistants, and I've coached over 300 teams in 33 years, the number one secret I tell every leader is to have that daily huddle with their assistant. And I explain why it's important and the benefit of it. And it's hard. It is a hard behavior for them to build but I also know every single time they start doing that, they are so grateful. They say it's the number one thing that turns their relationship around and their productivity around. It's because you're talking to each other. So we'll, we'll move on because I could talk about that for quite a long time, but let's number one is, is initiate it. Now let's talk about a moment in person versus virtual. I mean, if you're working and you're in the office, you're in person and your leader is there, well, of course, that's easier because you can get in their face, right? But if you're working remotely, um, again, you're going to have to work harder. You're going to have to get on that schedule and create that time. Um, when you support, yes. Eileen, thank you for bringing it up. Yes, 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 you are right. When you support multiple people, you're right. You cannot have daily meetings with those people. But what you do, because I've supported multiple people, is maybe you, what I would do is I would 
do that huddle more with my senior person. So the person I supported the most. Um, yes, if you have, you've got seven executives over the US and you meet weekly. So that's a great idea. Maybe that's another solution. Not daily, but it, maybe it's that weekly touch base. The point is, let's get back to the point. Just do it, okay? Whether it's one day a week, um, and it's not texting each other. This is not just texting back and forth. It's not emailing each other, a response to something. This is much bigger. It's where you're having intentional communication with purpose, and it's strategic. So um, let's go on to number two. Let's keep building on this and then um, see where we go from here. And I know there's questions coming in, so Malia will gather those questions. Number two is to get better information from your leaders, better. It's not always about getting more information because that person can give you just a lot of minutia, information or things that do not matter. So what you have to get better at is figuring out how do you get better information out of that individual. So I'd like to know, give me some of your ideas. What would you do or how can you get better information from your leaders or your team that you support? Any ideas? Clarify objectives. Yes, that's great, Caleb. Thank you. Ask better questions. Yes, yes, yes. Ask better questions, direct questions, specific. Ask follow-up questions. That's awesome. Awesome. You get a star for that one. Set priorities, ask specific questions. Yes, a lot of you have that idea about asking questions, that's correct. It is asking the right question, right? So years ago, oh, probably 25 years ago, there was a book going around corporate America called QBQ, the question before the question. And the premise of that book, I didn't read the book, I just know it was going around. Um, but the premise I knew was the reason why we don't get the answers we want, it's because we don't ask the right questions. So it's really important to think about when you're questioning that individual. So um, I'll give you another example to, to go with this because it leads to um, how you could help take things off your executive's plate because this is, has to do with the wording and how we say things. So it's easy. Most assistants might say, well, you know, is there anything I could help you with? And I might, it's easy for me to say, no, that's all right. I'll take care of it. But years and years and years ago, I had an assistant who said to me instead, what can I do to get that started for you? Wow that stopped me i was actually walking out the door to go i don't even know where a lunch meeting or something and I, there was something i had to work on um when i got back i had started it but not much and so when she asked me that question i stopped and i thought differently and i said well you know what you can make a phone call to so and so and here's their number and here's what i need so do you see that's important to think about the questions you're asking to get the information you need so you can do a better job, right? Um, any other ideas how to get better information? I think you're doing a really awesome job with your ideas. Another way how we get better information um, in terms of our leader is read what they read, okay? Pay attention. What are they reading to get ready for a meeting? Or what are they reading that has to do with the industry? So sometimes it's not 
directly asking them. I mean, it is, and I want you to ask them and get better answers and better information. But another way, you know, to learn their world is to be involved in what they read. And maybe they get like I get industry uh, newsletters every day, you know, so that's another way to learn what your leaders are interested in. And then, but you got to figure out how it ties to their work. It's not just reading. You have to understand how to connect the dots. All right, number three. Um, let's see, I have a slide. I do have a slide to show you on this one. So number three is select the right tool. And I think this is going to be an interesting conversation because I heard from one of my trainers who was recently teaching one of our classes, when she got into this discussion, she got pushback from the attendees. So um, I'm up to push back if you wanna push back, but I know for a fact, you have to learn to select the right tool and that's with any individual. So in other words, let me set the stage and then I'll show you the slide. We tend to, uh, I mean, think about it. Someone texts you, you text them back. Someone emails you, you email them back. But that isn't necessarily the best tool to use. So all star performing assistants really think first about goal and motive and so forth, and then select the best tool. Because the goal when you're communicating should be to have impact. So if you want to have impact, that means you have to get people's attention. And if you want to get their attention, you can't just always text or email. So I'll show the slide. Let's see. Well, where is it? Here we go. Share screen. And I hope it doesn't mess this up because it seems to do that. All right. And I really want to show this to you. So this is in our Star Achievement Series, and we also have this in our World Class Program. So instead what you want to do you don't want to be like everyone else okay if you want to be that star performing assistant um you first of all start with the end in mind so you think about what is my goal or what is my motive for communicating with this individual you know what is my purpose what information am i sending so are you trying to build rapport or gain trust? Are you introducing yourself like to a new person? So when we have um, people who reach out to us on our contact us form or whatever, and they, they want to talk about potential training or speaking, I don't want to send an email. I want to get on a Zoom with that individual. It's really important that they see my face, they feel my energy, they hear my passion about what I do. Um, are you expressing an idea or a thought? Are you just providing data? So if it's just data, yes, maybe you put it in an email. Are you disclosing confidential information? Okay, you shouldn't be texting that for sure. Uh, so that's what you do. You first have to think about why am I communicating with this person? Now, again, it could be I'm just confirming a meeting time. That's no big deal. But if you're trying to persuade them, you're trying to convince them to a new idea, you're trying to effectively explain your point of view, you know, you have to think about that. Then you think about your relationship with that individual. How long have you known them? Are they a staff member? Are they a colleague? Are they a senior level executive? Are they an external? Are they a mentor? Are they a civic figure? You know, you have to think about who is this person? What's my relationship with this person? Can I be more friendly and, uh, or do I need to be heir to the more formal side? 
And that's something I really want you to think about because I have seen so much informality in emails that it makes me nuts. When somebody starts out with, hey, I don't want to read that email. You know, that that's not, you know, hey, hey's for horses, we always used to say. So, and I know it's popular. People use it all the time, but it's not about being popular. It's about showing your best foot and putting that forward because it's about your brand, which affects many things in the workplace. Then you select your mode. Am I going to do a voice call, a video call? Do I text? Do I need to pick up the telephone? So that's the approach. And I've got to find you again because I stopped sharing. There we go. All right, are we good? Is everybody good? Now I can see you in the chat again. <laughs> Oh, can you have a copy of the slide email test? I, I don't know. Let me see if we could work that out. I know everybody always loves the visuals, but I love visuals because for me, all I have to do is see that quick visual and I got it. I get it, right? We often don't remember words, but we remember visuals. So I promise if you start thinking in that fashion, you're going to be making better choices in the tool you use, which therefore you'll have more impactful communication. You'll get more of what you want in less time. Um, interestingly, when I was with the executive I was telling you about in the EA a month ago, they do, they text each other a lot, uh, which I get it. You know, I understand that. Malia and I text as well. What I loved though, the executive, very high profile executive told me that I wish my assistant would come and get me, would grab me out of that meeting, would come and walk into that office or would pick up the phone and call me when I'm in the car. I don't always want that text and I'm not always you know, paying attention and looking at that, or I can't clearly, you know, explain something. So I loved that the executive said that because that executive recognizes those aren't always the best tools. And also think about how many times, oh, you could use the snipping tool. All right, I could put that slide back up in a moment. Um, and you could take us, yeah, use your snipping tool. Um, but what I wanted to say is how many times do we text people and we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it can take all day because they're not there and then you've got to wait. Where if you just pick up the phone, just pick up the phone or go to someone's desk, it makes me nuts. You could tell it makes me nuts because I will get it done much faster than the going back and forth. It's the same thing with your emails. Think about it. How many times you go back and forth, back and forth? Or you ask, you know, you have four questions and they answer yes. Yes to what? Yes to number one, number two, number three, number four. <laughs> so also just, you know, the clearer you are. And again, communicating with your leader. Now I know I will hear assistants say to me, well, my leader just wants to text. Okay, so here's another secret. It doesn't mean they're always right. Again, I've coached hundreds of executives and I've told them it's not right. It's not the best method. Okay, so also as that assistant, yes, I don't mean ignore your executives or your leaders preferences. If they say, I really wish you would text me, but maybe there's boundaries that are set. There's protocol, like, yes, when I'm in a meeting, text me if you need me, you know, really urgently. But other than that, if I'm in the office, let's take five minutes and have that time with each other because you could clarify information when you're together. So, um, I know I could go on and on about that, but let's keep moving 
forward because that leads me to number four, clarify expectations. So what do I mean by that? This is probably my biggest aha or the biggest ahas I had over the years when I would do coaching with executive and assistants um, is that the expectations vary. So for example, the, the leader has expectations of what they want that assistant to accomplish, but not only what they want them to accomplish, how they want it, how urgently they want something done, how they want information delivered to them. The assistant has what they perceive are the leader's expectations, or they have their own expectations but often they don't match. So the picture or the analogy or that I like to use is, um, let me see if I can do this with you. Uh, I think I can. All right, so I have one view of you. Basically, I see the chat, <laughs> which you see too, but I'm looking at a camera. You're looking at me and you see what's behind me. So we're both right, our views are both right, but they're different. So the idea is if you wanna have these powerful, you know, the power of communications comes in clarifying expectations as to priorities, when things need to be done. You know, do you use an ABC system? How do you determine um, and that's a whole other subject, priorities, right? What, what does urgent mean in your mind? What does urgent mean in your, the people you support, you know, in their mind? Maybe they expect you to have something done in a day, but you realize, and because you know how much time it takes, your expectation is you'll have it done in a few days. Is that okay? So when you have the conversations, that gives you time to clarify expectations. Like I said, that executive said, I expect, I would like my EA to chase after me more. No, just always text me. I want you to pick up that phone. That's an expectation. Well, the assistant thought, well, it's obviously fine. He hasn't said anything. So that's the other part of it is maybe the people you support, they're not always going to be clear on their expectation or the outcome and how they think something should look. And then they come back and they critique you and you feel hurt because you think they're critical of your work. It's just they had one view and you have a different view of that assignment or that project. And it happens all the time. It happens in our office. It happens with people on my team, not just the, you know, Malia and I. So it's constantly, and that's why we need to talk about things so we could actually clarify. And so what can you do? What can you do? How can you take the initiative to clarify expectations? Give me some ideas and then I'll tell you some of mine. So one way, of course, is you're giving me your answers. Oh, Dawn, all right, maybe use an example of something in the past where expectations were not met. Okay, and then discuss that. That's really great. What else? Ask questions. Um, gosh, these are moving fast. Reflective listening. Julie, excellent, you get a star. Set aside time, yes, to have those conversations. I mean, often, you know, assistants will tell me, you're, I mean, first of all, you're your own worst enemy. When you say my executive or my manager doesn't have time for me, you're shutting yourself down right away. Basically, what you're saying is you don't deserve their time. That's how I view that, that's my perception. You need to value yourself more and see yourself as that partner to the people you support 
doesn't matter how many, but really seeing yourself as part of that team. Therefore, you need to have some of that time so you can do your job better. Does that make sense? Um, have the conversations, be accountable, confirm what you're hearing. Yes, so another, that's great, confirm. So I would say, um, I don't know why Malia, your picture's still up on here. I'm not sure why I'm not going full screen if it's something I hit, but that's okay. I like seeing your smiley face. Um, so anyways, I'm sorry. What I was saying is, uh, I would say, let's say Cassandra, you're in the chat. I would say Cassandra. So as I understand it, you are requesting I, A, B, C. And then they have a chance to say, no, Joan, that, that's not really what I meant, really what I'm asking for or requesting. So you almost feedback what you think you heard. And again, it's not like you're going to do this with every little thing, but you've got to look for those opportunities throughout your days and your weeks, because just remember, when you learn to communicate more effectively with the people you support, it's going to make your life easier easier. It makes your life easier. I'll never assume, clarify, excellent. All right, let's move on because I'm watching the clock. Uh, I love the next one. Number five, learn executive speak. One way to have more powerful uh, or effective communications with the people you support is to learn and pay attention, executives. And I use that term, you know, as a broad term. It may be a leader, it may be a manager, maybe a director, senior VP. Okay, I'm just using that as an umbrella. But those people, they do have their own language. I have my own language as an executive. So when you learn to mirror that or, or speak like they do, which I'll give you some ideas in a minute, then they're going to be more open to you and listening to you and hearing what you have to say and you'll you'll feel more like that partner with them so what do i mean here are some executive speak tips i have several but i'm going to share five with you so number one use straightforward communication straightforward don't beat around the bush and you don't need to tell them the whole backstory on something. It's like, what is happening now? They don't have time. They don't have time. So often the backstory is not important. Sometimes it might be, but a lot of times it isn't. So just be very straightforward, which leads to number two, be precise and concise. So this is where you have to stop and think. I mean, communication is about thinking. It's not just spewing words out of your mouth. It's being, if you want to get to the next level, and I don't care what career you're in, you're going to be a strategic communicator. And that's what we teach in our classes. When we teach communications, it's not the basics. It's how to be very strategic in how you communicate. So you can build rapport and you could have more wins and you could get more of what you want. Um, the third one, speak with intelligence and clarity. So what does that mean? Does it mean use a bunch of big words? No. It just means, what do you think that means? Let me ask you, speak with intelligence, right? I know you're all intelligent people. We just, we have to speak that way. We have to sound like um, we really, again, our, our thoughts are gathered together. Uh, yes, Kayla, speak with confidence and authority. Yes, that was my next one, Kayla. Good minds think alike. Use a confident tone, whether you're speaking like I am right now, or it's in writing. So do that. Uh, yes, you've got, I'm looking at it, makes sense. Yes. 
Honora, don't use slang words. Yes. Know what you want to say. Yes. Thank you. And then the fifth point, wait, that's, yeah, the fifth one is organize and prepare what you're going to say. Like I said, maybe you take a few minutes to get your notes together. Um, and then the last one, this is kind of a little separate piece here, is to mirror the words and phrases they use. So they have their own words. And I love to listen to executives. I've done it all my life. I love it because I love to listen to the words and try to use those words when I speak. So some of the words, I'm sure you've heard these, flawless execution, holistic. They'll say, get in the game. I don't know why, especially male um, managers and executives love to talk sports analogy. Roll up your sleeves, get on the field. Strategic, alignment, get engaged in the business. So a great thing would be for you to listen to the, the managers and leaders you support and see if you could come, you can pick up on some of the language they use and then mirror that. Um, another one they love to say, oh, zero tolerance. Like I have zero tolerance, meaning no patience for something or it's not acceptable. They talk about win-win right or analyze synthesize those types of words all right anything else really quick could you think of a executive speak any other words alignment all right so while you're doing that i'm going to go on to the last one so then we can um, get on to q a i have a special piece i just i wrote as i updated the star series and obviously it's because of things we had gone through for four years, but we're going to go through chaotic times and turbulent times again. So this is how to communicate a few keys during chaotic or turbulent times. Now, one thing chaotic doesn't always mean something bad is happening. I mean, right now at Office Dynamics, we are in sheer chaos in a good way. Our conference is in seven weeks. Our 30th annual conference for administrative excellence is seven weeks away. And it just hit us all the other day on top of all these other mounds of projects we have going. So we're in a chaotic kind of time. So communications is extremely important. All right, I have four tips for you. Are you ready? Number one, you've got to talk to each other. When there is so much going on, you've got to talk. You've got to get the clarifications. You have to make sure you're aligned. You have to make sure you're on the same page and you're heading. And that what you understood an hour ago is still the understanding. Because usually during those times, things are moving very quickly and they're changing very quickly. So while we can't control everything that's going on around us, we can control how we work together. Number two, communicate the expectations. Again, are, are you clear on what's expected when you're going through these crazy times? Number three, discuss and agree on processes. So are you clear on who is doing what? You can discuss, does this process still work while we're going through this time? Do we need to adjust something? Do we need to add a new process? And then number four, which you mentioned, uh, someone mentioned, use active listening. Active. You've got to tune your mind out from everything else that's going on when someone's speaking to you and actively listen to what they're saying. And also take notes, make notes. Don't assume you're going to remember everything. All right, really quick. I see some people have to, to run off, but um, I, we're still on. We still have 15, 20 minutes or 15 minutes for Q&A. Before I do that, I just quickly want to let everyone know that because STAR is coming up soon, 
if you are interested, we're, we have special pricing now. It's called our, I think, Star Saver pricing, $500 off. So if you want to look into that program, it would be a great time because it's only two weeks and then we start with an orientation class and you can find out or learn more at officedynamics.com. All right, let's go to Q&A, Malia. I hope you're there. I don't know. <laughs> Where are you? Can you not see me? I can see you. You're usually in a little box in the corner, so you've been on the screen with me. Yeah, I know. We noticed that on your screen, but it's not like that on ours or the. Oh. I don't believe it's that way on the audience either. So That's strange. Okay, maybe it's something I did. <laughs> I mean, That's so very hot. possible. <laughs> It's the Joan Burge view. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, let's start with Paige. She works in a fully remote environment as an administrative and operations manager um, who also schedules for the executive director. What are your recommendations for communicating with the executive director in a remote environment? And how do I manage her schedule when she has so many meeting requests that she wants and mostly needs to meet with these people, but her schedule is constantly full. <laughs> Malia, sorry, I'm only laughing because Malia, you could answer that one. <laughs> Malia usually has no place to put people uh, except often until next year. In fact, we're actually saying next year, Joan could talk to you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, first, <laughs> the first one about um, that you're fully remote. Yes. So one, one thing is a lot of the tips, um, and we discovered this because as I was redoing the STAR, is we have a lot of remote, right? Is that a lot of the tips that I share for in-person are also for remote. So, but you have an extra challenge, right? And that is getting that time with your manager where they will talk to you. And that, that goes back to the you being able to be on one of those meeting times with that individual. I mean, really, at least a, once a week, if you could do that. Obviously, if you could do it twice, it's all the better because those are also those times you could talk about this very busy calendar. And if we're, we only have so many hours in a week that I can put someone really discuss those priority people. Um, and she wants to meet with everyone. Well, the reality is so do I, but you can't meet, we can't meet with everyone. You know, we only have so much bandwidth because we also have to work on our projects and we have to work on the business part of it. So anyway, schedule, see if you can, and start out slowly. Sometimes I suggest just one time a week and then you can build a two or three. And the other uh, part of that is you're going to have to be really good when you're communicating in emails with that individual, being very clear, being very concise, um, clarifying the priorities. Again, your best bet's going to be either talking on the phone, FaceTiming each other, you know, or doing a video. And then as far as the really busy calendar, again, Malia, you know, she'll tell you when she has hardly no wiggle room, she'll come in and she'll ask me, right, Malia? Yes. Like, you'll be like, all right, look, you want to talk to the person this week. <laughs> look at your schedule. Did you pull up your calendar and look at it? And this is all you've got. What do you want me to do? So, correct. Yeah, you have to have those discussions. Do you have any other tips, Malia? No, but that was a really great impression of me. <laughs> Because I do that. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So speaking of communicating and picking up the phone, Lynette says she understands the, the pick up the phone part, but text is the leader's only option. Um, their oh. leader hates phone calls because it could have been a text or an email. How do you handle that when you cannot get a response via text with your leader? Um, and your leader is very rarely ever in the office. Um, so the next, you know, and maybe others on have ideas, but um, 
I always say you still you have to talk to these people. You know, I cannot believe the number of assistants that tell me their executives don't want to talk to them. They only want to text them. They don't want to interact with them. This is not right. I'm telling you from my heart, it is not right. And we're getting farther and farther and farther away with this technology because of the technology which i love so you have to have a couple things the courageous conversation i always say that where you sit and you say like if it was malia malia look i know your preferred method is texting i understand that what i've observed though is i don't always get a response in the time i need it and I've got to get this work done for you. What would you suggest I do? Throw it back in their lap. What's their idea then? If I won't allow you to call me, then what do I, then what's my idea? Mm -hmm. So again, this is where you, you people have to step up a little bit more, not be so afraid, but you do it in a very professional way. You heard, I carefully selected my words right now. The other, is then you may have to go to the email piece, right? Then you may have to try to reach them via email. Um, short of that, send out a 911 to go track them down and <laughs> get their attention. So th this is not only your issue. This is a huge issue for a lot of assistants. Um, so we have to do something about that. We have to take unleash some of our power in a good way, in a, a very good way that will be accepting. Okay, I'm getting on my bandwagon here today, but you could tell this is an important topic. It is. Uh, Kendra would like to know, how do you manage dealing with an executive who angers easily? Um, that's hard. Well, I know just an overall strategy with any person that I learned is to just listen. Um, you know, when you're dealing, I remember when I was teaching about how to handle angry customers or upset customers way back, I had to do this. And the number one was just listen, kind of don't react to that. I don't know if any of you others in the chat have ideas or what you do, but if I had an, a executive like that, um, that's what you need to do. Listen, if you can step away, just listen, let them rant, let them do their thing because they maybe have to vent and get that out. You could say, depending on what they've said, you can say, I understand how that would upset you. I understand how you might feel that way. And then if there isn't a solution, fine. It's just acknowledging that feeling that they're having at that moment. Um, the other, if you can step away from it, you know, remove yourself from that. If it gets really bad, then you have to have a conversation. Um, because that shouldn't, you know, if it's affecting you personally, if they're just venting, and Malia knows I vent sometimes, but that's just, I need to vent. Okay, one, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Another, <laughs> another one, is there another question? Oh, there's a lot of questions. <laughs> that's a hot topic, we may need a part two. Maybe James and I, I was just thinking, maybe this is a good one for James and I to tackle. Oh yeah. Um, so everyone really quick what i'm talking about is uh, i'm doing a special webinar in october uh, october 4th we just figured this out with james um Bist bristow <laughs> i always want to say bistro <laughs> kayla Thon. <laughs> don't tell james that kayla <laughs> and i'm having lunch with him today and we want to talk uh, we're going to do a webinar for assistance again we did one earlier this year it was the most attended webinar of our entire year james is an amazing executive and these would be great questions for james it's the one year anniversary of our book launch so i think i'm going to talk to james about that 
Mark your calendars, October 4th, everyone. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. Okay, one more. Um, Cassandra wants to know, how do you handle a situation where the executive says they don't need an EA, but the EA was forced on the executive? The EA has tried to engage with the executive, but never gets a response. The EA and executive do not talk during the eight hour day other than saying hello once a day. The executive doesn't give the EA anything to do ever. Um, to be honest, it, it's that sounds like an HR question, to be honest. I mean, really, I mean, I could tell you things to do and to kind of insert yourself into their life, be nosy, but if they're not visible, um, I didn't notice if you were working remote or not, but you know, it's one thing if they're in the office and you can kind of stick your nose in and try to hear and see what's going on. Um, then, but if not, if they're not even around you, that's extremely difficult. So seriously, it's a conversation I would have with HR. Like that executive needs to be utilizing you. That's not right. Um, so that's that's my advice. Okay. And you are right. It is yes. It is disheartening, and uh, that that executive doesn't you know understand the value. That's too bad. All right, one more, and then I, I have just a couple updates for everybody. Okay, Katrina would like to know, um, do you think it's important to match the tone of your executive? My executive is from California and very casual. I feel like I would it would make them uncomfortable if I started a conversation with something other than hey or hey there. <laughs> Yeah, I think when you're communicating with your executive, it's the two of you um, to mirror that. You know, I'm not, no, I don't ever say, hey, that is definitely not in my vocabulary. <laughs> I can't get into that one. But anyway, yes, you, you mirroring as long as it's, yeah, a good thing you're mirroring and that's, that's not bad, you know, saying, hey, if they're more casual, be more casual. Um, you know, I had an executive, oh my gosh, way back when I was working at Coppertone and things were much more formal there, but I, he was young and he was a hot shot executive VP of marketing. I was a little older than him. His name was Steve. I loved him to death, but I realized if I really wanted to get Steve's attention, we had to go out to lunch and, and he always wanted to talk about his flying lessons and all these other things he was doing. So I do that. And then we get down to business. Then I say, okay, Steve, now this is what I want to talk to you about. So mirroring, yes, mirroring them is, you know, a good idea when it's the two of you, or maybe if you're speaking on their behalf, but I would say other communications, you should always err to the more professional side because you don't know that person on the other end um and especially if it's your first impression you know with that individual and the other thing i'll tell you really quickly so i have just built this massive course um 12 sessions that i'm going to start uh right after labor day for a client global administrative professionals like 150 of them around the world and the essence of what they want me to teach is about professionalism and how to brand themselves in a professional way because they've gotten too casual in their environments. I've had another, everybody all of a sudden, these clients are coming at me, the companies, the HR people, the T&D, the executives saying, people have forgotten how to be professional since 2019 because of COVID, because of working at home because of all of that. They don't want to socialize. They don't want to talk to people in the office. It's a big issue. You know, for us, you know, thankfully we're getting a lot of training now, but it's real. So, you know, air to that side, because as far as leadership, they still care about those things. All right. We have, okay, one minute. So quick, quick, quick. Um, 
announcements I wanted to tell you about. Like I said, webinars. I, I have the next four months planned out as far as the topics that I want to um, cover in the webinars. So hopefully soon we'll be getting that up. September we'll have a webinar, October's with James. Oh, November, a secret. I know, and my team always gets mad when I tell you secrets. We have something really exciting that it's coming in 2024, but we're going to announce it at our 20, our November webinar. Um, we're going to have a tech guru here. I love him to death, Mike Song. You're gonna to have to make that webinar for sure. And then December, it's a wrap. That's our year wrap up. So that's our fun time to give away lots of gifts. So you have to come to that. And what else? Oh, conference. As I said, our 30th annual conference woo, woo, is in seven weeks. Yeah, Malia's like, oh my God. Uh, come in person. We'd love to see you and dance at our golden gala with us or live stream. And then Julie Reed is going to teach sig seven significant power skills series that starts, uh, what is that, the end of September. It's seven weeks for seven power skills, and each class is two hours. You could check that out on our website at officedynamics.com. So we have a lot in store for you because we think you're wonderful, and we love all of you. All right, I hope this was helpful today. Bye, everybody.